of this year 2020 and the new decade also and so let's try and build some bridges <laughs> shall we yes let me also use that cliche all roads lead to Mombasa <laughs> <laughs> this Saturday <laughs> for the building bridges uh, sec, uh, is it the third mobilization yes. meeting after Kisi and Kakamega mm -hmm. right but even as the bridges are being built the amount of political heat that is also being generated is immense. Na masharti, na conditions, na conditions, na manyapara, na nani. You have to burn a whole bridge. <laughs> Absolutely. Is that a building one? What I find interesting is the statements that are coming from the political class. Let's try and hear some of them. Um, today, uh, Raila Odinga, the former prime minister, and the handshake partner to President Uhuru Kenyatta was meeting senators from the central Kenya region. And uh, the deputy president was also out and about in Embakasi West uh, to open a few projects here and there. And they all spoke about BBI and the meetings in Mombasa. Let's hear. Everybody is uh, welcome. We have said that the game is inclusion rather than exclusion. So we want this to unite the people of Kenya, not to divide the people. And I think that they've realized uh, the fertility of the kind of stand that they were taking about this. They realized that this is not aimed at giving any particular individual's advantage. Na mimi nataka ni waulize viongozi wawache kuwa ati wao ndio manyapara. Ati wakuamua nani atakuwa BBI, nani hatakuwa BBI, nani ataenda mkutano hii, nani ataenda mkutano ile. Wewe nani alikupatia nafasi ya kuwa nyapara? ati wewe ndio unasema nyinyi kujeni nyinyi msikuje nyinyi mmealikwa mimi nataka niwaambie hakuna mtu ambaye ni mgeni hapa Kenya wa kualikwa two things they have realized the futility of what they were doing and secondly nani alikufanya nyapara jo no but i, I think the, the, somebody is being disingenuous here i mean look there has been a contest about these rallies. The deputy president, for example, said that these rallies were of no point. He said, Kuna muto mekata BBI, why are we going around doing rallies? And he even wondered whether we were using public resources to, to do these things uh, around the country. No one has told us which money is being used. And he was raising that in spite of the fact that he is in government. But now, uh, two days ago, was it yesterday, his people come out, these are people who are closely linked to him, Murkomen, uh, in the whole group of people that have been called Tanga Tanga in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you know, we are going to attend the Mombasa rally. And this was a shocker to many people because they had said all along that there was no need to have these rallies. They said that these were campaigns that were not necessary, that they were putting the country on unnecessarily tense uh, moments and that sort of thing. And now the deputy, uh, and, and they've said they are going. So the mm -hmm. deputy president now says, well, Nani uh, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I lose my head many times when I see all of these things going on. I think that uh, the deputy president has been on an overdrive over this BBI thing, and it is almost impossible to understand where he stands anymore because he says but I support yeah, it. So he says I don't want these rallies. Yeah. Now today he was addressing uh, a school, school gathering children. there, and he's, he's saying Nani Nyapara. And to be fair, I think that uh, I haven't had too much uh, chest thumping from the other side since these people said I only had people like Junette saying, "Well, uh, let Mashaati. them come, Makuja na Madabu Kidogo, and all of those things." But but honestly. It is all very childish what's going on about this BBI thing, in my view. Yeah, and can I, what is this then? Um, because you mentioned an interesting twist uh, from literally almost delegitimizing uh, these these rallies mm -hmm. and what they're doing, talking about how they're spending public funds, to now saying, okay, we will attend. What is this? Is it a change of tack? Is it a retreat? Is it surrender? I mean, I, I'm not sure I understand what, what the gameplay is. What's the beginning of the city card? Is question, my though? take, uh, Yvonne. The first press conference, and maybe we can have <laughs> yeah. a look. I hope oh, you credit yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with all the copyrights to, <laughs> to, the, to Yvonne's take. I think the original uh, press conference was by Senator Murkomen, mm. Kichuba Murkomen. And maybe we have that bite. We'll listen to that, and then uh, yeah. I'll give you my take. Okay. Yvonne's <laughs> take from my end. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
uh, and their wonderful meetings, we, we, reasoned, uh, we reasoned and asked ourselves, would we rather sit and watch misinformation and discussion out there that is about positions and about power, yet we can have that opportunity to share things to do with the economy, things to do with unemployment, things to do with social justice and security. What we want to tell our colleagues is that one, they should come in a very good mood. Uh, let them come with smiles. It is a jubilation. It's a, it, it, it's a happy thing. Um, we don't want uh, any conditions. They should not leave any conditions. And they're also free, as they have said, to organize many more meetings. He mambo si mambo ya siyasa, sana sana ni mambo ya kusikiza vile wanainchi wanasema. Kama hao watu wa mulengo huo mwingine wamesema atakuja Mombasa, kujia ni musikize. Lakini usikuje na masharti. I'm shocked. I saw the deputy president the other day com complaining about early campaigns. That these BBI meetings are about early campaigns in the country. I was really shocked. I couldn't believe it. When himself he has been campaigning for the last two years to become president in 2022. Now when Kenyans come together to discuss a document, he, is he feels threatened. He says, this is early campaign. Let us not be myopic. So my take, Yvonne? Yes. The press conference by Senator Murkomen and team, the one thing they should have carried to that uh, meeting is white flags. This was an act of surrender, no doubt. We can call it change of tack, we can call it a change of strategy, but all it amounts to is we give up. Because look at what feeds Kenyan politicians, is rallies, it's numbers, it's that show over the weekends. Look at how they approach funerals, look at how they approach church services. And then here comes an opportunity and two weekends that were completely mm. blistering for the Tanga Tanga side of the politics, Kisi looks like a state function. Uh, Buhungu Stadium mm -hmm. looks like a state function and a combination of, of, of that. Very highly energized uh, event, perhaps only comparable to uh, Rainbow Rallies in 2002. This was not sustainable for the Deputy President. This was not sustainable for Tanga Tanga. This was not sustainable for those opposed to uh, BBI. They were going, they were sunk in two weeks, basically. Because uh, I think I remember the second weekend, is it um, uh, when BBI was in uh, Kakamega? Kakamega. Uh -huh. The deputy president was in a funeral. Right. With uh, uh, Kalonzo Musyoka? With, with Kalonzo, Kal Kalonzo Musyoka. Right. Look at how quickly the entourage can be depleted. Because in Buhungu, you had all these faces. You had governors, you had uh, a lot of politicians for Kenyan politicians and by the way they it's a bed they made so they must lie on it mm -hmm. they like this show of who else accompanies you mm. there'll be a lot and of the analysis. size of the crowd yeah. the size of the crowd and they will be reportedly taking their own crowds yes. to Mombasa so yeah. optics is so important for them that for Tanga Tanga two weekends of BBI rallies were political um, um, annihilation and, and considering the fact that already uh, the host, uh, Governor Ali Hassan Joa, said, Wakuje, lakini wakuje na adabu, wakuja County 001. And what today, does that mean, they, were, they were touring. I don't know. We, I think it's <laughs> a question. Of course, the other side is feeling... Right. Uh, like I mean, like, mkuje na adabu, meaning... Na yeah, na, yeah, na, yeah, na, actually, na, some of them have been saying, like, wajue mkutano ulikuwa mepangwa. So, yes, so there's a way yeah. that it has been arranged. But what, 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 uh, uh, wasikuje okay. tu, wakuje mkutano ulikuwa mepangwa. It's like, uh, tulikuwa tusha... Uh, agree to tapiki wa tu saba yeah. asa njimu mekuja wine 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 so and so atuko tu mwatara wow. and, uh, and of course it'll be in Tononoka ground and the history with it and they were there today inspecting to make sure that that itakuwa sawa but what is interesting also about this BBI is the fact that now leaders in Iftibali have also keep, kicked off their campaigns to popularize BBI you know we've not seen really much in terms of their support it's been a bit lukewarm but now uh, Governor Tolgos campaign to say I could popularize BBI in Rift Valley, and there will be also attendance. But they need to tell but us. is not a is not a DP Ruto ally yes. at all. He's not. But the point is now clearly to Rift Valley, sasa pia wameanza mm -hmm. kujusisha sasa clearly and openly mm -hmm. that we no, support the BBI process. But I think they need to tell us what changed. Quite frankly, because you can't be saying one day that these things are a waste of time, they waste are of money. waste of waste money, of public resources. and all of and these things. And then now things. he says it's a wonderful meeting. He said this was a, this was the, these are wonderful meetings, but wonderful and yet full of misinformation. The, 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 in my view, the strategy is simple. Instead of being accused of being anti-BBI, and so far 
I've not had any politician say we are opposed to the report that came from Bomas. Actually, one would even wonder what is the quarrel about because if all of you agree on the documents, so, then what are you quarreling about? Right. Yeah. But you see, even all this discussion, all these meetings have very little to do with BBI. Let me ask you a question. If these meetings are about popularizing the document and mobilizing for support of that document and picking views from Kenyans, when how do, do you pick, pick how views? do you pick views from view, from citizens mm. in a public, a public rally? rally. And, and actually, possible. yeah, the number Secretary one, general, number two, yeah. number two, all those rallies, I mean the, the Kisi rally and the and the Buhungu mm -hmm. rally, yeah. did you did you see any ordinary citizen given a microphone to and asked, what do you think about this document? Or, or even are there having a copy? Yeah, they're or, signing or are the copies because, being uh, you because know, it distributed? it has very little to do right. with you, the ordinary yeah. citizen. It's about the political class. And that's why, because this side of the political class feels slighted by what has been happening, it's now, let's go there let's take for two reasons. Them. One, yeah. if you go there, they have the, the, the what, what you call the pro-handshake team has been saying, the DP Ruto side is opposed to the document. And so first to deal with that perception. claim that mm -hmm. or perception mm -hmm. that you are anti uh, go there uh, Bibia, and, yeah. go there and demonstrate that you are not opposed. But, but, but Secondly, it, you're also looking for hostility if it will be there. And so if this building bridges is about bringing people together, if it's about national cohesion, if it's about harmony, and then you go there and you're mistreated, then you will say, see, we came they mistreated us. And you to yeah. change so, the headlines. So I basically, think, oh, right, yeah. basically is go there, let them embarrass you if they are going to embarrass you. So it has very little to do with the document, but more so about the optics and the politics around it. And make no mistake, if the uh, Tanga Tanga team goes to Tononoka and they are embarrassed, they will definitely grab some headlines because they will say, we came on a villa wametufanya. Is this thing about national cohesion but, but, but really? Let's, let's not, but but, but yeah. playing victim may not amount to much because considering from the time the launch, uh, the report was launched, and even the period preceding that, the divide was always there. The change of heart only happened mm -hmm. this week. And they're going to Tononoka and they're saying they're, going, they're not going to oppose the report. But what we are going to see in Tononoka and probably uh, rallies going forward is an air of mistrust. Mm -hmm. and, and you could see it when this uh, uh, BBI side was saying, Kujeni lakini Kujeni na Dabu, it's, it's a sign of mistrust. Because they say, oh, you wore the other jersey, you made your position clear, you've been opposed to this uh, before. But I want to add this, uh, uh, Francis. BBI is also about politics. Absolutely. It's not just about the document. It's also about w the life after. So <coughs> it lead to the constitutional changes. And if it doesn't, what will it amount to? Right. There is one talk that should be taken uh, seriously. David Murade and a number of other politicians have always been talking about um, the emergence of a new political formation. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, that politics in this country have revolved around three geographical features in Kenya. The mountain, the lake, and the valley. But somehow, political alliances have been a two-seater mm -hmm. uh, uh, thing, vehicle. It's a two-seater thing. It can only take mm -hmm. two features at a time. Either the mountain and the lake, or the mountain, the and, mountain the and the valley. And the valley. Yeah. And there was a time the valley and the lake was on one side, and that was 2007. And seven. And, and, and seven. We're talking tribes here because that is how the three major political uh, tribes have been playing politics in this country. We're seeing that coming in again. And what that has done is to cause displacement. Mm -hmm. There is displacement because the mountain and the lake are working together. And that's why you see deputy president, who is a deputy president, a person inside government, operating as if he's on the outside lane. Because of, it's a two-seater thing. It's two features at a time. So mountain and lake are in the driving seat of BBI. The deputy president can only take a back seat or reclaim the co-driver seat with the... And, and, and and you know, in fact, uh, oh, just hold yeah. on, just hold on, Joe. If it is about the politics and the 2022, there's something that um, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga said mm -hmm. in relation to that 2022, and listen to what you're saying. First, I've never said that uh, I want to be a president in 2022. So th this is how misguided some of those people are. Uh, and the BBI report does not talk about elections 2022. 
that is what is completely not about. So we really don't want to divert attention of the people of Kenya. Those moves are diversionary. They are not help, helpful at all in this uh, initiative. And therefore, I would invite our people to completely ignore people who are completely misguided. In Mombasa, the president told us, Yo, vitu ni nyinyi mnaandika. Yeah. <laughs> it is interesting that uh, he also hasn't uh, said he will not run. You understand? So, so, so <laughs> politicians are interesting animals because the day that he decides, for instance, that he wants to run, there's nothing to stop him because he has never said he's not running. He's just saying, I've never said I am running. Mm -hmm. But that, be that as it may, I think that uh, we will be pretending tonight if we were to imagine that, in fact, I'll go a step further, Linus, and say that the BBI is all about politics. There was never anything else about it. Because remember, mm -hmm. this was something that was started uh, by two people. These two people were vicious political foes in 2017. They went to the ballot and people, there was serious tension in this country because of these two people. There are places where people died and that sort of thing because of these two people. And suddenly they come up and say, hey, you know what? Uh, we have realized that Kenya is actually bigger than the two of us. That's an interesting realization to make after those many years of being alive but be that as it may this 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 they start a process that now we are talking about and imagining it is anything other than a political process it is a political process if you look at all the issues the nine issues that were pointed out there they are as political as can be mm -hmm. why because this country revolves around politics whether we like it or not mm. and therefore we are going to continue seeing politics these rallies that are going on around the country there's no way bbi was just going to be a report has been launched mm. and then some people <coughs> sit somewhere quietly and give us a document and then we quietly go into the ballot or whatever we do and then we pass it it was going to set the stage for what's going to happen in the days to come and finally there's something called manufacturing uh, consent. Mm -hmm. This is something mm -hmm. that uh, uh, scholars like to talk about. And the idea about this, in my view, is that because there's going to still going to be some kind of going around the country, I mean, the steering committee has said they'll go to all the eight regions of the country. By the time they go there, if there are any citizens who are going to go there to talk to them, which language are they going to be speaking? They'll be speaking the language of mm. Kisi, they'll be speaking the language of Bohungu, mm -hmm. they'll be speaking the language of Tononoka and whatever. And that is what this is going to be about. There's no views being collected um, at those rallies, but there is a message that is going out from those rallies that is going to begin to affect how people Speaking think. Speaking about no views being collected, Joe, uh, we spoke about this last week, the fact that the people who attend those rallies don't even have copies of that BBI yep. report. So at our jury, what, yep. is, what is being discussed, other than what they're being told, is contained in the report. And, what I found and, interesting, their and their declarations. And what I found interesting <laughs> was, I'm trying to remember exactly where it was, but sometime this week, in somewhere, I think in Nyanza, there were some leaders who were distributing copies of the BBI report. There were these bound, sleek looking copies in English, and they're being distributed somewhere in the village, and there are very few copies. And I was thinking, okay, if that's what they've started doing, why can that be replicated all across the country? So that yeah. by the time, see, there's a calendar showing that the BBI yeah. runs the Kuawapi next one, and okay, Namubasa, or Totoka, attend, Wapi, attend, Wapi. But make sure before you get there, those copies have reached those people. Absolutely. So by the time the meeting is going on, we're all speaking from an informed point. So we can stand up and say, no. I've yeah. read the report, and that's not what it says. Yeah, and, and as we move to the next one, I'd just like to point out that if this is headed to a referendum, which they keep saying it is, I don't know why we expect um, BBI as a referendum to be something that is unifying. What is a referendum? It is a contestation of two ideas. You vote yes, or you no. vote no. Yes. So at some point, you will definitely have people on either side. So I think even the talk mm -hmm. that BBI if, as a referendum... What is the nature of a referendum? What if you are choosing between two ideas? Yeah, one maybe, against, four maybe against, maybe one necessarily. idea. Maybe not necessarily. Why do I say so? Is it possible to have a yes referendum? Because any part of the constitution that requires amendment via popular initiative must go through a referendum. So this is an opportunity. If everybody agrees, it will have still to go take for it to that yes, approval. Take it, take, it, take it to the people for approval. Take it to the bank. But, but, yes. but either but way, a referendum is be, a dividing... It will always divide us. And especially yeah, with um, two years to an election, mm -hmm. yeah. 
guaranteed. Is it because the issues will be divisive? No, because the political class wants that division. No, it is because a referendum is by itself forcing people to decide one thing or against another. Yeah, referendum draws a line. Let me say this: referendums are about politics again. Yeah. They're not about the document. And mm -hmm. I want us to be informed by our own history. Starting from 2005, we had a referendum in, on the 21st of November 2005 mm -hmm. on a document. Um, and, and you remember that the was banana fruity. side and the, <laughs> oh, yeah. and, 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 and the orange side. Was that referendum really about the constitution? No, it mm, wasn't. Yeah. It was the two sides of the National Rainbow Coalition that had fallen LDP out, and NAK. Out. Yeah. Yeah. LDP and NAK that got this opportunity to sort out, to flex their muscles. Yeah. Ideally, what is supposed to be happening right now here is the fallout between URP and TNA or whatever remained of it that informed the formation of Jubilee that should be taking us to the, to the referendum uh, f for a contest. Referendums are used to settle political questions. Absolutely. They're not about yeah. very, very uh, uh, um, detailed things. They, they're just about basic political yeah. questions. Which side do you uh, yeah. support? But at and what finally, cost? To the, to the issue of... Um, Who cares? Of, of, <laughs> yeah. of what it, <laughs> they certainly do Of what it, it would result in. Now, processes like BBIs have always ended up in some political formation or the other. Mm. The National Rainbow Coalition really was made up of groups or two groups that felt after Kanu, yeah. what we need to do is to change the constitution. That's what brought LDP and NAK mm -hmm. uh, to, together. together. Yeah. You, you, you move on to uh, the, the 2005 referendum. What did it produce? It produced the Orange Democratic Movement. Right. Who now are here members, in, members included yeah. uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga, and, uh, and William Ruto. They were mm -hmm. all part of the ODM. That was a political formation. BBI, my own projection is, will lead into the formation of a new... All right. Now, it's a question. I, I want us and to move. Yes, they I, I would really like Kibra. us to move. Yes, because if we're talking about a, a contestation of ideas or a splitting right down the middle, well, that's exactly what happened. Um, at what is the ivory tower of knowledge, but it looks like it's the Tower of Babel. I mean, in a week, in such a short span of time, so much happened at the University of Nairobi. Someone is appointed, then he's unappointed or disappointed. You name it. Yeah, but disappointed. Disappointed, yes, disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it does work in this case. Um, and so what are we talking about? I mean, you know, Professor Kiama, by the way, that case will now be heard and determined tomorrow. But even today, Professor Kiama was addressing students um, now being termed the embattled. But this is where it all began. It all began with Cabinet Secretary for Education, Professor George Magoha. And he turned the tables on what was supposed to be a glorious week an inauguration installation that was coming up. Let's listen to Professor Magoha on why he will not, or did not, um, uh, appoint uh, Professor Kiama. I cannot and shall not appoint anybody without consultation. Is that clear to everybody? So all you are hearing is hot air and politics. And I'm not beholden to anybody because I will take orders from my appointing authority. That is precisely what is happening. It is very unfortunate that it's happening because somebody some, somewhere is pulling strings that wants to destroy the university. Because as I don't, I am taken aback to see how people are posturing about issues which are not uh, non-existent. But then again, um, you know, fights within academia, this is not the first time we're hearing about it, not at the University of Nairobi or indeed any other. And, and Joe, this is... These things happen. I mean, I know we think it's professors and this is not the sort of thing that we would be seeing happening, but there's history at the university. Yeah, yeah, but I think what has uh, bewildered me, quite frankly, with this is the, the degree of, of, of madness, quite frankly, that I think uh, we have seen over the last couple of days. I think that uh, if you look at, um, for example, uh, I, I was a bit shocked by Professor Kiyama, the way he has handled the whole thing. I, I know that he feels aggrieved, that he was, uh, it's almost like if uh, someone was going to swallow some food and then it's literally yanked out of your mouth. But <laughs> he is a professor at the end of the day, and uh, one would imagine that he would carry himself with a certain degree of uh, um, modesty and, 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 you know, restraint that, you know, this is, uh, uh, it is a process, there's a process. and. Uh, 
he's taken a matter to court and everything, but for him to be walking around trying to go to a student's press conference, trying to, I don't know, do what, and trying to operate from a different office because the, the one that he would have been using has been uh, locked or, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. I would imagine he would be retreating quietly probably to the vet place where he was and waiting for this thing to pan out in its own way because it's now looking like he's desperate for something. He's looking like he has to get this at all costs. And that, I think, is not working very well in his favor, certainly not in the eyes of the public. And I've seen even the sentiment within the university so far is not looking very uh, good for him, in my view. Yeah. And I think we need to listen. You've just said sentiments. Yeah. Uh, Robert, can we listen to uh, the, the sound bites about uh, from Professor Kiyama and also uh, those uh, stakeholders mm. uh, in, in the university? And let me continue. I can sit here very, very firmly, very firmly, that I'm not serving anyone's interest. Uh, because in an academic institution, and you have heard me talking to those members of staff, and I talked to the professors yesterday, we must have a free spirit, we must be able to think. We expect that this matter can be resolved fairly fast, because the institution, like you can see, is at a halt. Anyone saying the opposite is lying. I know there are people who are bragging around that they are the vice chancellor. That is only momentary. The court gave interim orders. You know, as an alumni of, of, of University of Nairobi, um, mm. I look at this, yeah, both undergraduate and, and masters, but do I say, but uh, this is an institution that <laughs> has been ranked as... Uh, wow. <laughs> Uh, and the best in East Africa. Uh -huh. Even McKinley has come number two. The Arabs says, play on. Play, play on. Play on. Play on. Play on. Play on. Play on. But, we, but seriously, um, at a Joe, Penny, I'm not going to the University of Nairobi uh, is ranked as one of the best in this region. Mm -hmm. It's actually their, their best. Makere comes second. And in fact, there was a recent, uh, um, there was a ranking that was done out of the thousand, a thousand best universities in the world. University of Nairobi was 990. That list included MIT, Oxford, Harvard, Yale. You know what they call Ivy League schools? Yeah. But then now, look at the number of students who go to University of Nairobi. There are over 85,000. There are 13 campuses. The amount of fees that these students pay is into hundreds of millions. Someone was saying about 700 million. And the amount of money that the university receives up to 22 billion. In yeah. fact, it's made more than what the Nairobi County received receiving, last year, yeah. which was about 17 billion. Yeah. So this is a big institution with a lot of money involved and there are a lot of interests. And I think this thing needs to be resolved as soon as possible, not just for students, but also for the name of the University of Nairobi in terms of what it means. It is important to, to know or to tell our viewers where did this drama begin? Yep. Because what is the process of appointing a vice chancellor of a public university? You see, it's a process that involves the public service commission that mm -hmm. does the interviews. It involves the university council, involves the uh, cabinet secretary in charge of education, mm -hmm. and even involves the president because there are consultations that must be done. Yeah, and that's only with the chancellor. We have some graphics here yeah. showing the results of that um, public service commission interview. Um, from uh, Stephen Kirogo, the chairman of the public service commission, the indications are that the results were Professor Kiama was number one with 80% um, or thereabout. Yes. And he was uh, the, the top the top four candidates, the top four candidates were clearly outlined. But you see now, the University Council proceeded to appoint uh, Professor Kiama, even as consultations according to the uh, CS mm -hmm. education were going on. And so it was like an ambush to the CS and to the president. In fact, he says, as soon as just the day before yesterday, those consultations were still going on. Mm -hmm. And that is what necessitated what he says, he took a step back and decided to act. How did he act? By chasing away the entire council yeah. and uh, rescinding the appointment yeah. of uh, Professor Kiama. So we are in a dilemma. We are in a very tricky situation because on the other hand, what has the court done? It has granted Professor Kiama uh, an order staying stay. as, as, the, as, as the vice chancellor. In fact, today he was meeting fi first years yeah. uh, as the vice chancellor and that meeting was attended by several dons. So it tells you something. There is a lot of confusion, but more importantly, it's not about him, Professor Kiama, or Professor Mbecha, who is being appointed as acting vice chancellor by the CS, but also the forces behind them. Who is pushing who, why, 
where and and i just want to add something about the confusion when uh, that you mentioned um remember the law in the beginning was that it was solely up to the council, uh, the council. And, and these were informed by some of those changes but even that regulation in itself still introduces ambiguities that the council is supposed to um consult with the cabinet secretary so it doesn't what happens if they disagree mm -hmm. You know, does, on that, does consultation does mean consultation concurrence? Mean concurrence and me, what happens, uh, you know, grand coalition, grand coalition yeah, right? Consultation I mean, and, and even where, you know, th there's academicians and that sort of thing, then we still see confusion over regulations like these, Linus. And, and that is a tragedy, yeah. Yvonne. It, it is really a tragedy that uh, all processes must now be attended by mm. some form of politics. Yeah. It, it, or it, legal it, 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 action. It's really right. sad. Yeah. What is safe in this country from politics? Which appointment can we do without politics. I still haven't forgotten the very public discussion about the appointment uh, or, or the succession of the late uh, Bob Colimo mm -hmm. at Saf Safari Committee. It was a very political discussion. Yeah. Kenyans, I mean, th this is sickening. But um, going to the point that uh, Joe had made earlier, you know, in 1981, uh, President Ronald Reagan was shot in an attempted assassination. And there was his Secretary of State who turned up at the White House, Alexander Haig, and uh, claimed to be in charge. He was looking sweaty <laughs> and, and, and very <laughs> ruffled. That is the image that came to my mind when I saw Professor Kiyama uh, scrambling to take charge. I think he needs to exercise restraint at this point and just let the processes play out. The law is, to my interpretation, to his advantage at the moment. Mm really he, he should be uh, uh, duly elected or appointed as as, as the, he's duly appointed by the by the public service commission the the, the bit that is that, that waits awaits clarity is a, a consultation yeah. so he, he is to hold back and and probably preserve himself so that it doesn't look like a political process uh, you know when he spoke of having a new base or some temporary base to run the, the university from. It reminded me of Governor Waititu yeah. <laughs> claiming that uh, he, he's running the county from yeah. from some office because he can't access his office. So th there is a lot of self-preservation as well that needs to come in place. These are academicians. This is a university. It's not a political institution. Basically, um, some form of restraint is necessary. Yeah, and, and there were a number of issues. I mean, I think there's 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 issues to do with structure, to mm -hmm. do with governance, and let's not pretend that there's issues to do with money. It is high stakes. Mm -hmm. It is highly political. I mean, the University of Nairobi, even within the Students' Union, has always been infiltrated by our national politics, particularly the University of Nairobi. And there's a number of issues that go into, um, you know, what happens there uh, with the money and what is being earned. Uh, I mean, you know, there's the report of the visitation panel this was actually done by the chancellor um, and in it there was there were some interesting things that came out for example you know vcs are allowed to go back into faculty once they uh, retire but apparently they continue to keep the same salary as vc mm -hmm. even when they're serving now as a lecturer mm -hmm. and they continue to keep all the trappings of power so that and just so many other things that were raised in this report that is here um, and perhaps you know this could be part of what is fueling it there but it is no doubt high stakes money contracts tender political influence is at the heart of this as it has been by the way uh, with just about every appointment i think in this point uh, at this point it just manifests itself in rather petty ways who is not allowed to access the office now that one has been uh, reinstated by the courts at least temporarily he sends the other one on leave the other one says you know i'm not going anywhere changes you know locks. Gate, changes locks uh, gate crashing meetings i mean it really is downright petty with these ones but there are serious uh, issues of governance there are serious issues of accountability of funds um, that need to be addressed and I think that's what's underlying all of this seemingly petty politics and, and that needs to be addressed at the University of Nairobi Yvonne, with the billions 20, of shillings 20, they have. 22 billion yeah. shillings is not small money. That's right. I mean you're talking about the drama that you see that's in right. Nairobi County government for example with about 17 billion. So we're talking Imagine about that. Nairobi plus 3 billion more. There you go. You know so you expect this kind of drama and mm. Yeah. The, the vice chancellor is a very influential person. Why? Because this is the CEO of the university. Mm. His decisions, his directives are very, very serious but, and, but at what point and, and very consequential. At what point do we begin to see the difference between the University of Nairobi and the, and the county of Nairobi? Oh, I mean, okay. really? If, <laughs> right if, now? If, if, <laughs> <laughs> right now, there is none. Okay. <laughs> All right. I think uh, <laughs> okay. it's time to take it home. And our last words begin now.